what I want to discuss are uh, our malfunctions with this. Because if we have this, we should know that. And if you don't know it, you're, you're going to know it now. First off, once again, dummy rounds, by the way, dummy rounds. First off, what is the most common malfunction with this platform? Double feet or failure to feed. I could stand here all day. <laughs> I didn't hear the right answer yet, that's why. Failure extract. Failure to fire. Operator, Operator no CLP. Operator. Thank you, who said it? Operator. Yes. <laughs> Operator error. Shooter induced. It's not debatable. That's number one. The last core the last two days out here, we had several malfunctions. And I think 99% of them were shooter induced. <laughs> yep, shooter induced. So shooter induced is didn't you didn't load it, number one. It's not loaded. There's not even a mag in it. <laughs> Click. Whoa. Oh, shit. Mag's not seated. Bolt's not in battery. All that stuff. Shooter induced. Number one. Not debatable. How do we resolve? How do we perform immediate action with this? Slap rack. Slap rack, right? Slap rack. Is that going to clear everyone? No. No, but it's going to clear most every shooter induced malfunction. Most every one. So therefore, it'll clear most of them. But let's talk <sighs> sequence of fire, eight step cycle of operation. What is number one? Mm -hmm. Firing, number one. Fire. All right, failure to fire. What could cause failure to fire? That's shooter induced. Firing pin. Fi firing pin can be worn, right? When you inspect your firing pin, the tip should be bulbous. <laughs> right, the tip of the firing pin is bulbous. Bulbous. So it could be that. What else? Hear that primer. Yeah, it could be bad ammo. You guys don't see that much because you got good ammo here. But I see it out in that civilian world where guys are, you know, scrimping and buying cheap shit. I see it a lot. Fade of fire. Somebody else said something about hammer. Not hammer, but hammer spring. I've seen that several times, right? Two prongs in the hammer spring. One side or the other broken. Hammer doesn't have enough ass to freaking send that firing pin home fast enough to detonate that primer. Fade of fire. So that's a pretty common one. And that's also slap rack. So firing, what comes next? Unlocking. Thank you. Uh, who said that? You are not, you got it right, but don't answer the rest of it because you probably know the sequence. So unlocking is the next one. <laughs> now there's not a lot of malfunctions. <laughs> with unlocking, but there's several with the next one. Firing, unlocking, extracting. rock and roll, extracting. Uh, fuck, I gotta go to the game. Uh. <laughs> Failure to extract. What, what causes that one right there? It's not a bad extractor because that extractor's hanging out for dear life. The good news with this one is you got a good extractor. He's hanging out for dear life. Dirty extractor. Hmm? Dirty extractor. Nope, like... this one's not extractor because it's you know it's really hanging on. Your ammo. Dirty chamber. Yep. Once again, it could be not necessarily chamber, but throat. Foul throat or ammo expansion case expansion in the throat. It could also be an extra an obstruction in the throat, and I'll explain that pretty soon. Uh, so those are the main ones. How do we clear this? Maybe to extract. <laughs> God damn it, I can't hear this whispering going on. I'm, I got good hearing too, man. Weapon 
not safe yet. I'm not gonna drop the mag. No, I'm not gonna drop the mag on this one. I usually just drop from the ground. Mortar it, right? Mortar it. What do we do before we mortar it? Collapse the stock. Because we don't want to break that. The reason I'm not going to drop my mag is I'm going to do it right there. And I'm going to put it right back into action. Charging handle, boom, get that sucker out, put it right back into action. Because because I don't want I don't want to add a step to it if I could get back into action faster. Another type of failure to extract, of course, is bad extractor. So it's always a good idea when you break it down, you reassemble it, clean. See, so you're not just cleaning it to clean it, but to inspect it. So if you got a dummy round or a piece of brass, you hook it under and kind of check to make sure you've got a really good ex extractor bite. All right. So firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, ejecting. ejecting. So there's a couple of different type of failure to eject. This is one, damn it, where the brass just trickles out. It just trickles out. It's like, what in the hell, what in the hell is causing that thing? Any ideas? It, 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 here, it, the thing, thing is too, guys, we're doing this in the eight step, step cycle of operation because if you have a malfunction, you should be able to identify it and then uh, resolve it for what it is and uh, perform you know, remedial later, like fix that piece or, or replace this, that kind of thing, or lube that. Instead of saying some bullshit like, it's a misfire. <laughs> So this one, the brass is just trickling out. It's not a, it's not some, some, no, not yet. Uh, not extractor spring, ejector spring, right. So another thing, take my, put my bolt back together when it's clean, hook that brass under the extractor and feel the ejector spring tension. I want to know what right feels like. If I know what right feels like, yeah. I know what wrong feels like. And wrong will slap you in the face. Yep. So when I see that, I said, let me check your rifle out, pull it out, and I do this, and I go, oh hell yeah, man. Yeah, you got an extra bolt, freaking get an extra bolt, put that in because your injector spring tension is no more. All right. So, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting. Another failure to eject could be the, uh, as a result of the next one. What comes after ejecting? Yeah, right on cocking. All right, so, boom, recycled that piece of brass. So it didn't eject because it didn't, there was no cocking. What causes that? Thank you. Yeah, you're losing gas from somewhere. And on this, we lose it from several different places. So gas block, right? Gas block, the gas comes out, goes up into the gas tube and down. The gas block can be loose. Not so common with, you know, these type of OEM sites, but like aftermarkets, uh, gas blocks, it's, it's relatively common. The next place we lose gas from, gas key, All right, right there in the gas key, I've seen gas keys come loose. Where's the next one? Gas. Rings. Yeah, you guys do that. <laughs> so, should be three of them on there, right? Does it matter if they're lined up or not? It does not matter doesn't make a shit because once they're in the bolt carrier they collapse 
So an easy way to check your gas rings is when you put your bolt back in your bolt carrier, you should be able to suspend your bolt carrier with your bolt, because the only thing holding on right now is gas rings. So that's right where this three gas rings is wrong. Oops, I want my Yeah, see, that's wrong. So you know your gas rings have shit the bed. So this, this right here is not gonna work very long. Yep, you're gonna go boom, click, boom, click, boom, click. Gas rings are easy to replace, man. I always carry them to the range with me. Carry a freaking butt load. Uh, takes about, I don't know, a minute and a half to change three gas rings out. Ish. So, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking. Feeding, yep. So a couple different failure to feeds. This one right, boom. There's one type of failure to feed right there. Just call it what? Double feed. Yeah, double feed, right? What causes double feed? Yeah, magazine, right? Loose lips. So during cocking, a round will jump out and sit like that bolt comes forward and tries to chamber two of them. So if that's a recurring theme, you need to shit can that magazine. Don't put it back in circulation so somebody else could get a freaking double feed. That thing needs to have a big X on it and smash it with a hammer or something, throw it away. Because otherwise somebody else is jacked. <clears throat> Another. So with that guy, drop the mag, lock it to the rear. Now live rounds get stuck up in there. So you just have to reach your hand up in there, loosen them up, and they'll fall right out. <clears throat> Another type of failure to feed. Oh my mother of God! <laughs> what I create there? Bolt override. Bolt override. So I call a bolt override a double feed that's gone rogue. <laughs> so during cocking, a round jumps out and sits on top of the mag. Bolt comes forward. This round goes like that. And it gets stuck between the bolt group and the charging handle. <laughs> Holy hell. Is there armor in the house? How do we clear that thing? If I mortar it, it's just going to make it worse. You can push back on the bolt, relieving the, the tension from the buffer tube, buffer spring, and then push the charging handle forward or back, however it's stuck, and it'll fall right up. Yep. Or we can just go ahead and clear it. Yep. <laughs> so simple. One more time. Yep, one more time. <laughs> oh, my mother of God. You got to say that anytime you get a bolt override. <laughs> Cause that sucks. Now if we mortar it, watch what happens. Can you see that? Can you see the bolt in the round? Mm -hmm. All it's gonna have, it's all moves as a component. Uh, Everything moves together. Mortaring is gonna do nothing but make it worse. But we wanna pull this back about an inch. You can do this in the dark. Pull it back about an inch. Hold the bolt in place anywhere. Anywhere, just hold it in place. Slap that forward. Not, it's not a catastrophic failure. Just fix it and get back into the fight. It's, 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 it's a couple seconds. If you know what it is, it's a couple seconds. Get that sucker back up and running and get back into the fight. Because it does happen, but most people see that and go, this is a catastrophe, I am out of the fight. Hell no, man. Just fix it. Firing, unlock, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding. Right, what causes failure to chamber? I've heard uh, that there's a new one, I guess feed ramps have been getting jacked up with the A1, is that right, something like that? But there's other simple, so one is, I see it on the outside, because people buy cheap stuff. I had a guy come to a two day rifle course, 
with a thousand rounds of cosmetic imperfections. Every round was bent. Yeah, every round, a thousand rounds. Um, I've seen my own eyes this many times. Either a cigarette butt or an earplug chambered. What the fuck? Somebody's seen it. Who's seen that? Who's seen that? Oh. Last class, uh, I had three guys that had that same thing. How does that happen? You know how it happens. It goes in your pocket. That magazine's the same pocket or ammo pouch or that earplug. It's now a trash picker up. You pull it out. Chamber, a cigarette butt, or an earplug. I have also seen once. I had this one troop with Bay 2 extract. So I was mortaring uh, for him, and as I mortared around out, it was writing on a piece of brass. It's a script. And I was like, what the hell? So, through the power of deductive reasoning, I determined that something was stuck in the throat. So I shotgunned it, took out the bolt group, and with the dental tool pulled out a Jolly Rancher wrapper. <laughs> yep. Um, such, uh, oh, also, yeah, that's good. Right. So, firing, unlocking, extracting, check, cock, feeding, chambering. Back to lock. So failure to lock, a couple things could happen here. An obstruction in the chamber. And, some, and, the, and, and it could be just a freaking a pebble. It could be uh, a lug from the bolt face. It could be a lug from the star chamber. It could be a primer. Shit happens. Weird shit happens. So those are the big ones. There's a lot of other little ones, but the thing is if you know how the rifle works, you can go to the source and fix it and identify it for what it is. Versus it's saying some bullshit, some arbitrary bullshit. I had one class where I had, boom, <laughs> the bolt stuck there. No round, no magazine, nothing. It's stuck. What happened? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you're getting close to it. There's something stuck between the bolt group and the upper receiver. So, this one class, I I edged that with a screwdriver ball feet hammer. Boom. Took it apart. Took the bolt group out and went. And there was a primer in the cam well. Three classes later, had the same thing happen. Boom. And I had four gun geeks all looking at this, trying to figure it out. And I walked by, I said, you get a primer in the cam well. And I walked past and, went, <laughs> and they banged it out and went, <laughs> yeah, he's a wizard. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> it's necessary to know that those eight step cycle of operation, especially for, you know, just this for the malfunction. Good thing that we should all know it. And now we do. Because we just repeated it like eight times. Everybody good? Alright, what do we need for the next thing? We need 40 rounds for the next thing. 40. What do I got with the rate? 40. Yep, 40 rounds for the next thing. Guys put up clean targets so we're good on the target line. So we'll get 40 rounds. Uh, we'll come down. To the firing line, I'll explain the course of fire. Get hot. Oh. Oh.